Hey guys, it's Sherry Vegas and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, we are going to be making aromatherapy inspired wax melts. To get started, you just need a few items. You're going to need either some clamshell tart melt trays. Um, you can buy these from pretty much every candle supply. These are also great if you are planning on selling them um, because they're already in a container. Or you can get silicon molds, you can get metal molds. Um, these ones are rose shaped and I'm going to do some rose themed ones in here just to show you guys the difference. And then these wax melts will be popped out of the mold. Um, and then if you were planning on selling them, you can always put them in like a cellophane bag or some sort of other packaging. So those are the two options that I have here today for my wax tart melts. Some dye, I have got uh, some mica powder and also some wax chips and I'll show you the two different options with those as well. Today I am doing a lavender and I'm also going to do a rose uh, inspired aromatherapy ones. So I've got some dried lavender and some dry rose buds here as well. I am using a soy wax for my tart melt. The soy wax that I have picked is designed to be able to be popped out. Um, you don't want to pick a container soy wax necessarily because it will need to be able to be removed from its mold so it can be melted. So that's just something to think about when you're looking for your wax. You just want to make sure that it can work for your wax melts or wax tarts, however you like to refer to them. And then I've got some pure essential oils. I've got a lavender and a rose as well. And then I've also got uh, some vanilla as well. The difference between your pure essential oils and your fragrance oils that are made for candles, your pure essential oils are derived directly from that plant. They're not as strong and they don't have stabilizers, but they are 100% natural. So I've got some of the ones that are being derived directly from the plant. They don't have any stabilizers and they're not going to have a strong scent throw. So I am going to be combining that with uh, some of my vanilla uh, fragrance oil just to give that a little bit more of a punch. You can also get, say, if you wanted to do lavender, you can get the lavender fragrance oil, um, which will have stabilizers in it and it will have a uh, bigger scent for It's just personal preference of which you want to use today. Um, I just kind of like the natural root a little bit because for the aromatherapy kind, I feel like it just adds a little bit. It's a little bit more nicer to go the natural therapy route. I've already measured out the amount of wax that I'm going to need to be able to do two of these clamshells and two of these roses. Uh, there's lots of maths formulas to measure it out, but generally I find, and if you've watched any of my other candle making tutorials, if I just do two scoops um, of the size of the mold that I want to use, so I ended up doing four of these because I'm making two roses and place it all in here. I always get the perfect amount every single time. I will be splitting this off once I've mel melted it down in half and doing one part rose and one part lavender just to show you guys the difference and dyeing them different colors. Um, but yeah, so now I'm just gonna add this on to my double boiler. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'd know that's my preferred method in melting wax. You can always use a microwave, but it just heats your wax up too hot too fast and you don't wanna accidentally scorch your wax. So just got a little bit of water in the base and then I'm going to add a container on top. That one is heat resistant and then I'm just going to be pouring the full amount of wax that I need to melt. While my wax is melting, I thought I'd go over why you would kind of go for wax melts over a candle, um, both soy based. And the reason why is sometimes people don't want to have an open flame, they don't like the smell um, that you get from that open flame or the wood wick or the cotton wick that you have. Uh, a lot of people do prefer to have wax melters um, just because there isn't that smell to it. And the second reason is probably because you can make them super strong. So when you make a soy candle that's either in a container or a pillar um, that contains a wick, you can, especially a cotton wick, you can only make it so strong because the fragrance can sometimes clog up your wick and so as you're burning it you'll find your wick either like burns out really fast or you'll get like a real tunnel and you won't end up burning up the entirety of the wax but with wax melts because you don't have that wick you don't have that issue with adding too much fragrance so my wax can take 15% fragrance so if I was using 
100 mils of my wax, then I could go up to 15 mils of fragrance to make them super strong. You can also create some really cool designs when you do make wax melts because we're going to be using like our rose molds. Um, you can also add in a lot of your dried ingredients and stuff because it's not going on an open flame so you don't have any risk of your dried flowers or whatever you add into it setting the light because it is just going to get melted on top of the burner um, and not be in any direct contact to an open flame. With this particular type of wax that I'm using, it needs to get up to 95 degrees for the molecules to expand, and then I need to take it down to 60 um, before I add my fragrance in. I'm gonna split it off into two, and I'm gonna do one that's gonna be lavender-based and one that's gonna be rose-based, um, and then fill up my tart molds that way. And I've got my rose sort of fragrances as well as my rose petals, and then I've also got uh, my lavender fragrances. I'm also going to dye my lavender ones with some chips. So when I split this off into two, the first thing that I'm gonna do is add in my chips um, at the point where it's still really hot because these do need to melt at a higher temperature. Um, if I was just going to be making one big batch of lavender, I could add these chips in now because it makes no difference how hot the wax gets for these chips, but they do need to get, the wax does need to get hot enough to actually melt these. So right now, if I was just making that one batch, I could add them in while the wax is melting and get a really beautiful color like that and not have to worry. But because I am gonna be splitting my batches off into two and I want one part to be pink and one part to be purple, then that's when I'm gonna add my chips in. But if I wasn't doing that, now would be the time. I've also got some mica powder and I'm gonna add this into the rose and I just wanna show you the difference. Uh, with my rose ones, I am gonna coat the inside of my mold in mica powder and then pour my wax into it just to show you a little bit of a different version to it. I've got my two rose molds here and I've added in some real rose petals, just some dry ones. And I've also placed in the pink mica all around the mold. And then I'm just going to pour my clear wax in. I'm not going to color this one at all. I have already fragranced it with my rose and then I'm just gonna pour these in and then the pink mica will then come off onto my wax. When you do add your fragrance in, you want to make sure that you really combine it into your wax and stir for about two to three minutes. I've just added a really sheer coat of my soy wax in just to adhere my petals to the bottom of my mold so that way they'll be visible uh, when I do pull them out of the mold. If you don't want your flowers to float throughout your uh, wax melt, you just need to do this step first. But if you don't mind, then you can pour your wax all at once. My dye chips have melted all from my wax and I have now added in my fragrance and I've gone up to the maximum which is 15% and I'm just going to pour it into my clamshell. So if you want to test out your colour before you pour it in, grab some white card and place a little bit on there because while it's still in its liquid form, it's going to be a different color than from what it sets because the wax I've used has a white base. So by placing it on my card, it lets me kind of know what how it's gonna set. You can let it also fully dry, but that's pretty much the color that I'm going to get with this uh, wax. And it's a really beautiful purple. And then I'm going to pour it into my clamshell with my uh, clamshell, I'm going to pour it, if you can see, right over just underneath that edge. I've just poured it all out. It is a little bit stronger than what I originally wanted, but I do actually really like that purple that it's turned out to be. So what you can do if you do accidentally make your colors too strong is you can add more wax in to counteract it because you're adding more of a white base in. And then on top, I'm just going to add 
my lavender. And you can add this at any stage. If you want it to just really sit on top of the surface, you can add it in once the wax has started to congeal um, and set or you can add it in now if you want a little bits of it to kind of float down to the bottom. With my last wax melt mold, I'm just going to fill it up just with my rose just underneath that line and I'm going to do a little just combination of the rose and lavender together. Once you finish pouring all of your wax melts, you just want to leave them until they have set. So it might be an hour to two hours to three hours, depending on the temperature of the room. But you just don't want to move them in that time because you don't want to accidentally damage them. Uh, so you just need to make sure you can pour them where you can leave them and walk away. I like to leave mine for about 48 hours before I even think about burning them. Just because you want to have time for the fragrance and the wax to adhere properly and then to set. If you burn them too soon, I find like they're just not as good. So generally, I like to give a minimum of 48 hours before I do burn them. I hope you guys have all enjoyed the Aromatherapy Wax Melt tutorial. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. That really does help me out. Um, and I'm so close to hitting 100,000 subscribers on my channel. And I would love to hit that by my birthday in June, which is the 20th. Uh, so if you are new to my channel and you have not yet subscribed, please do so. As I post all sorts of videos like this to do with candles, resin, arts and crafts, and tons of DIY projects and I post every single week. So if you've not yet subscribed, please do so and don't forget to hit that notification bell. Thank you guys so much for watching.